Welcome back to New Rockstars Kids, I'm Sam Bash and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Previously on this channel I did a breakdown of the very first Iron Man film to go along with the MCU rewatch you're probably all doing, leading up to Avengers Infinity War. I'm a part of it, you should join me, it's very fun. To keep that train moving, I'm here today to talk about the second official film of the MCU, The Incredible Hulk starring Edward Norton. Hey. Today I'm bringing you every single Easter egg and hidden reference I could possibly find in this movie. Here's a spoiler warning for this film, the first Hulk film, uh, that Ang Lee made, the TV show from the, you know, 60s, the comics, uh, and all other MCU films. Just cover our bases with everything. And again, here's a quick clip of me doing some background dancing. Just a few seconds, that's all I can handle. You're very welcome, let's kick this off. Let's start with comic book references because those are fun and because those are the first ones I noticed. First up, The Name, The Incredible Hulk, the title of this movie, a throwback to both the comic and the TV show of the same name. I know most of you know the origin of the Hulk backwards and forwards, but just to clear things up, since there have been a few different iterations through the different properties, so let's discuss. The Incredible Hulk debuted in his very own comic of the same name in May 1962 and was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, the main man. Dr. Bruce Banner was experimenting with a gamma ray bomb that, long story short, detonated right in front of him and doused him with some gamma radiation, granting him the ability to transform into the Hulk. Now this movie kind of seems to pull from a few different adaptations of the Hulk. The opening scene of this film is a clear recreation of the Incredible Hulk TV show intro, but also when we see Bruce Banner hanging out in South America, it seems to also pick up where the Ang Lee Hulk film left off. In this film, it also adapts the ultimate universe origin of the Hulk. Banner is tasked with recreating the super soldier serum that created Captain America. But it goes wrong and boom, you get the Hulk, but also abomination, but spoilers for later on in this movie. Also fun fact, director Louis Leterrier originally wanted Mark Ruffalo to play Bruce Banner in this movie, but Marvel and Universal pushed to get Edward Norton, a bigger star at the time, to play the Hulk because he's also a very big fan of the character. It just made sense. And also, I didn't mind his, you know, characterization. But anyways, during the intro sequence, we're introduced to a bunch of characters from the Hulk comics. Let's run through them real quick. First up, Betty Ross, one of the most famous love interests of Bruce Banner. She debuted in The Incredible Hulk number one in 1962 and has become a Hulk herself at some times. A Red Hulk to be specific. Originally played by Jennifer Connelly in the first Hulk film, she is replaced by Liv Tyler. It's also worth mentioning that Liv Tyler and Jennifer Connelly have played similar roles before, specifically sisters, in the Inventing the Abbots film. I haven't seen that one, but fun. We then see General Ross played by William Hurt, like Betty and Bruce, that he is Thunderbolt Ross appeared in The Incredible Hulk number one and spent many decades hunting down Banner and Hulk. Eventually he became Red Hulk and even joined the Avengers. I wouldn't mind seeing the Red Hulk pop up in the MCU, but it might be a little too crowded. During all these intros, we start getting flashes of top secret files regarding Banner, his project, and his escape. Now there are some awesome ties back to the MCU here, specifically Captain America Civil War. As for comic book references though, we do get some pretty awesome hints to one of Banner's sidekicks, but was cut during the final draft of the script. Check out that guy's name right here. Bam, and that would be Rick Jones, a very popular B-lister from the Marvel comics. Rick was actually a sidekick to Captain America, Hulk, Captain Marvel, and the Avengers. He made his debut with the rest of the Hulk gang in Hulk number one and has even become a Hulk of sorts as well. Crazy, everybody's a Hulk. Check out this pic of him as A-bomb. Pretty cool if you ask me. These files also highlight a fairly popular Marvel character who is played by Ty Burrell later in the film. Not the man I would have thought to cast in this part, but it's still well acted. Check out the name right there. That would be Dr. Samson, aka Doc Samson, as it were in the comics. Doc Samson is a character who debuted in Incredible Hulk number 141 in 71. He has super strength, nothing like Banner, of course, but he got his abilities when he siphoned them from Banner's radiation. Don't know how that works. That's why his comic book counterpart has green hair. Hulk's green, green hair. <laughs> Originally, he was actually closer to the biblical Samson, where he got his strength from his hair length, but eventually they kind of just dropped that. He got a haircut, I got a little buzz cut. Still green though. That would be an interesting character to pop up in Infinity War, but that probably wouldn't happen. Now let's scooch forward to Emil Blonsky, aka Abomination, who debuted in The Incredible Hulk number 159 in 73. Emil was exposed to similar gamma radiation as Bruce, increasing his strength, stamina, healing abilities, what have you. His abilities have changed a few times in the comics, but those are the basics that we see in this movie. Normally, Abomination has pointy ears, which were going to be added to the film version of Emil, but the 
director thought that in a fight, Hulk would have bitten them off. Yikes. So uh, they cut him. Not, they didn't cut him. They just didn't put him in the movie. Yikes again. More fun facts. Ray Stevenson was in the running to play Emil, but eventually he went on to play Volstagg in the Thor franchise. R.I.P. Also though, did you know that Ray starred in a Marvel movie way back when? Ray was actually Frank Castle at one point in the sequel that most people didn't see, Punisher Warzone. Oh boy, that's a violent movie. Fun facts. Moving forward in this film, we get references to the Super Soldier Serum by General Ross, referring to the serum that turned Steve Rogers into Captain America. But more on that when we get to MCU Easter eggs. Don't get eager. Scooching forward to when Bruce has snuck into Culver University, check out who's eating his pizza. A young Martin Starr. Hey man, you look very young and happy still. Silicon Valley has hurt you. Now guess who he's playing? Amadeus Cho. That was a name that you probably were not gonna guess because you probably went to IMDB and saw that he was just credited as Computer Nerd. However, in the novelization of this movie, I didn't know people read those, he is identified as Amadeus Cho, AKA the Totally Awesome Hulk. This is both cool and not cool because Amadeus Cho is Korean, and as far as I could tell, Martin Starr is not. Also, he goes on to play a teacher in Spider-Man Homecoming, so does that mean that Amadeus Cho is the teacher to Peter Parker, or is this character in the Hulk film now Mr. Harrington? Who knows, probably overthinking it. As for who Amadeus Cho is, he's the eighth smartest person on Earth and is the current Hulk. He got his powers by removing them from Bruce to save his life, and now has a somewhat better handle on them, kinda, spoilers for the comic. I highly recommend checking out his series. Scooching forward to the Culver Hulk fight, check out these two dumb kids filming it. I would have definitely run away, but obviously these kids are important to Hulk lore because the camera kinda stays on them for too long, so let's talk about them. Or at least one of them, since he's from the comics. I'll come back to that second one in a little bit. Let's talk about Jim Wilson, who appeared in Incredible Hulk issue number 131 in 1970. He was a sort of sidekick and friend to Bruce Banner and Rick Jones. Unfortunately, he did die in the comics pretty early on, but thank you, Marvel, for having him appear in a film. Scooching forward again, we see the infamous purple pants from every Hulk thing ever, yay. Then we meet Dr. Samuel Stearns, AKA Mr. Blue, AKA the leader. Ooh, look, he's wearing blue when they meet him. That's lucky. I kinda wish this character would come back to the MCU. He'd be so cool to fight the Avengers with. The leader appeared in Tales to Astonish number 62 in 1964 and is known for his enormous noggin as well as psionic abilities. Also, he's super smart. That's what I want in these movies a mind-controlled Hulk, which we kind of got already in Avengers Age of Ultron, but still, it'd be fun. Moving forward to the ultimate fight with Abomination and Hulk, let's give a shout out to Harlem and how this fight always pops up in the Netflix shows. There it is. But also we got the famous Hulk clap that extinguishes the flames of the helicopter right there and the Hulk smash that was just epic. Was it a little silly? Of course, but I actually really enjoyed it. But let's move on to MCU references, starting with the scene that never made it into the film, but was brought up in another movie. Remember when Bruce mentions trying to kill himself in The Avengers, but the Hulk stopped him? Well, that scene was actually supposed to be the opening of this film where Bruce goes to the Arctic and tries to blow his brains out only to be stopped by the Hulk. And here we actually see another Avenger tease. Check out this clip here. It's hard to tell, but it was confirmed that that right there, that little circle you can see, is supposed to be Captain America frozen in ice being a human popsicle. It's basically been confirmed, but it does definitely make the uh, first Avenger film kinda confusing since they find him in the ship. Still cool though. Moving forward to the opening montage, again, we see a ton of Easter eggs like this reference to Nick Fury, which makes this movie the only phase one film not to have Samuel L. Jackson appear in, but this still counts to so get his name. We also see Stark Industries brought up a few times, specifically with the Sonic Cannon that were brought up later in the film to fight the Hulk. These are actually really interesting and they pop up later in another Marvel movie, fun fact, but more on that soon. Then we get a shot of the Cryo Super Soldier Serum with a bunch of references to Captain America, the first Avenger. First up, Dr. Reinstein, AKA Dr. Abraham Erskine, the man who created the Super Soldier Serum, as well as the Vita Rays, the special rays that help bestow individuals with these abilities, which you can see right there on the canister. Also worth mentioning that the color of the serum injected into Blonsky is slightly off from the serum given to Steve Rogers, indicating that this might not work so good. <laughs> it doesn't, spoilers. Moving forward again to the Hulk freaking out in the rain, we see him throw a rock into the sky. Sure, this is probably gonna kill someone or something way off in the distance, but some fans on the internet believe that there is something hidden in the shot. Check out this little speck way in the background, way out there. Do you see that little thing falling? Now, a lot of people claim that this was Thor's hammer falling, because there's lightning and it's uh, an Easter egg, but it, I, it was debunked, it's not that. I'm, 
pretty sure it's just the rock falling again. It's a big ass rock. That definitely killed somebody. Later, we see the famous WHIH, the fictitious news network that we've seen in many MCU properties. Here's a few clips. Several witnesses are confirming that members of the Avengers and unknown combatants were here at the time. I'm the only one that's facing any consequences. That is pissing me off. Then we see the famous SHIELD logo, when the army is using the SHIELD database to track Banner. Very cool. Then moving to the campus fight for a second. Remember those Stark Sonic weapons? Well, take a look at War Machine's weapon from Civil War. Ooh, pretty fun throwback. Then back to the Harlem fight. Remember when Abomination spits out a tooth after being hit in the face? Pretty scary, right? Pretty intimidating. Well, actually, this scene is replicated years later in another film. Check out this clip. Ooh, Age of Ultron, very cool. Also worth mentioning that this film does not have a post credit scene. <gasps> a Marvel movie with a I know, it's sad, but because it's worth clarifying that the final shot of this movie is of Tony Stark meeting General Ross in that bar and mentioning the Avengers. Yay. Finally, guys and girls, let's talk about pop culture references. Like I said, the intro of this film is a recreation of the Hulk TV series, but there are even more throwbacks to that series than you might realize. Sure, we see Lou Ferrigno playing a security guard yet again, who, if you don't know, played the Hulk in the TV series, but we also see courtship of Eddie's father playing on the TV. Right here, specifically when Bruce is flipping through the channel. See, right there. This is a nod to Bill Bixby, who starred in that film, as well as played David Banner, the star of the Hulk TV show. <gasps> David Banner, not Bruce. More on that soon. We then meet Rickson Gracie, who plays Bruce's Aikido instructor. Rickson Gracie is an extremely popular jujitsu fighter. Also, I wanted to bring this up because he does this weird breathing freaky thing with his abdomen that I wanted to just show you on a loop. Here it goes. Moving forward to a fun nod to Stan Lee, the creator of The Hulk with Stan Lee's Pizza. Also, Stan Lee, the man running Stan Lee's Pizza, is played by Stan Lee, no, Paul Shores. That would've been fun. I wanted to say Stan Lee again. He's played by Paul Shores, who voiced many Marvel characters in the past. Bruce Banner, Spider-Man, Happy Hogan, Rick Jones, the list goes on and on. Also, he looks like Mario if he was aged up. Coming back to the TV series for a second, can you hear that famous end theme that would play when Bruce would move from town to town? Oh, it's right there. Also in this movie, we see General Ross on Fort John Johnson, which is a nod to the Incredible Hulk show creator, Kenneth Johnson. Then back to the campus fight for a second. Remember that second kid that I brought up earlier? Well, this is about to pay off because that character's name is Jack McGee. And this is another throwback to the TV series. Ah, oh, so many. Jack McGee is a reporter who is hunting down the Hulk in the TV show to make him pay for his crimes. Next, fans of The Wire probably caught Michael Kenneth Williams making a small appearance in this. Very cool. And finally, the David Banner reference I mentioned earlier. In the TV show, Bruce went by David Banner so that at the end, when he receives the necklace under that fake name David B, seems like a final throwback to the show. We did it. Oh, uh, actually, how could I forget our Stan Lee cameo? How could you miss this one? He's the man who dies uh, from drinking Banner's blood. Yay. And also, final fun fact, Stan Lee and Lou Ferrigno are the only two people to appear in both Hulk films. We did it, guys. We made it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if I missed anything and which of these facts were your favorite. Make sure you like this video, comment down below, share, and subscribe to New Rockstars. Make sure you check out my other Iron Man breakdown. I'm a big fan of that video. Hope you guys are too. Tweet me your thoughts at Sam Basher on Twitter, and I'll see you guys next time.